Hey everybody, welcome back to the Crochet Crowd. It's supposed to be my friends over at joanne.com. Well, today was the final day, week number four, but we still have to put all of our squares together. So you can see that it's a very large size. It's about 57 inches. Uh, that includes the border that needs to be attached once these are together. So in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you the whip stitch on being able to put them together. The same color balls are opposite to each other, so they're diagonal. And again, if you didn't want to do that, you could have made a fourth color um, that you wanted to and then just start the border as well. So a lot of nice options here this really goes with my house really quite lovely I was really quite excited about it so today's video I'm going to show you the whip stitching and I'm also going to just cover the braid real quick as we finish the braid on the one that had the ladder that is on the corner which is currently still open here and then once we get that done we'll take you then through the border in today's video so without further ado let's head on down to the studio and let's get you started well welcome to the stitch along and this is the final clue. This is the one that we're gonna start putting your stuff together. So you're gonna notice that two colors are opposite to each other. They're the same color and then the other two are in the other direction. Now I notice a lot of people in the stitch along did their own colors. Hey that's great. So what we need to do now is that we need to put these together. I'm gonna show you the invisible seam in order to do it. Because you did 18 rounds they should all match each other. And then once we get that done the border is actually pretty simple. And uh, these are really quite uh, fun and that is covered within the clue number four as well on how to do the border. So let me just take you to the instructions real quick, show you that and then we're gonna continue from this point. So right on clue number four you're going to see the border here. It's a total of nine rounds and it's completed in a stripe pattern. So it's color A for three rounds and then it's color B for three rounds and color C for three rounds. And so all you just need to do is that you just start off in the corner and you chain three and you double crochet uh, one into each one of the stitches and then in the corners you make sure that there's two double crochet, chain two, two double crochet in each one of the corners and it then, then it just builds up quite nicely. So you can see in the actual colors if you actually you follow it along in the pattern you'll notice that the colors are really quite strategic so it starts off with the main color to kind of uh, blend it all in and then it starts then going off with to the other two colors. Again the, the border is just a straight uh, double crochet border really quite easy and there's a total of nine rounds. So let's uh, get you to put this together first. Let's grab our darning needle and let's show you some tips. So I have some tips on getting things started so I'm just going to use my highlighter here. So what I would do is grab two yarn strands that are the same color as the white. So or of, of the main color and again you can decide. And what you're gonna do is that you're going to sew with the whip stitch up through here and then keep that strand going and go in this direction. And what this will do is that it will put this square together with the other two and then with the other strand you're going to then start off on the edge from one side and then go straight up. So essentially there's only two joins that you really have and then once you have that done then it's just a straight double crochet then all the way around the whole concept. But let me show the invisible seam because then you have a nice flat join by doing the invisible seam next. So the first thing that we need to do, we need to take care of the one that has the chain work on the corners. I've done now three of them. So all you're just gonna start on the first one and then just grab the other one. If you wanna use your crochet hook you can and just start looping them up into each other as you're going. This is like a Jake, this is kind of like the Jacob's ladder. So you're just taking a loop and just pushing the other one through. And so then you take the new loop and push the next one through. And you're gonna want to really give it a good tug, okay, because all your stitch work is actually on the same chain. So if you want to just do that, okay. So you're gonna see it's kind of looking warped. So all you're just gonna do is kind of hold it, kind of pull up on it and everything should reshift back into position. So leaving that out you wanna sew that into with its neighbor when you're ready. So let's uh, get our main color square up and let's get our tapestry needle ready. For demonstration purposes the string I'm about to show you that I'm doing this with is actually smaller than it should be. I wanted to get it so that I can go up one side and then across so it's gotta be long enough to make that whole journey without actually ending. So just make sure that you just take an educated guess on how long that strand should be. So what you wanna do with that starting strand is that you wanna create a slip knot on the other side of it and that will lock it in a position when you're ready. So just keep the loop out and ready. So you're just gonna lay it down so that the right sides or the front sides are facing up. Okay and if you have to just pull on it a little bit to get them to match that's what you need to do. So you're going to go right into a corner space. So here let me just zoom in and show you what to do. Now if you stay on the front side of the project 
okay. You want to go on the back loop. So if you've got two loops here, the, the one that's closest to me is the front loop but if you use the back loop of the furthest one you get an invisible seam. So go right into the corner. Okay, so there's only two stitches here. So you're just gonna go into the back loop only and then I would go through that loop right to start. That's your very first one and then pull it through and this will be a longer strand because you're gonna do um, a strand that can turn the corner and you're gonna put it through the loop and that's gonna lock it into position permanently. So now what you're just gonna do is you're gonna move to the next stitch here. Just place it so that this strand just gets stuck underneath the stitch work and advance to the next stitch. Stay to the back loop. So if you're looking from the downward okay, it's the one that's on the very bottom okay. So in this case it looks like it's the front loop but it's still the back loop and you wanna pull through both of those at the same time and you're gonna get this yarn strand into position underneath. So you're just gonna go to the back loop here, keep this yarn strand on top because you're hiding it and then go to the next stitch that's available to you. And then just go into the next one and just match as you're going across. Now if you notice that there you're running out of stitches then sometimes you just have to ad lib a little bit but uh, this should be able to work it out pretty cool. Just keep it nice and tight together and because you're going in the back loops of your stitch work is that it creates an invisible seam that joins without any uh, raised edging. So uh, some people say well how do you do that without the getting the raised edge like a windowsill if you go into the back loops. You get that exact look just like you see. So what I want you to do is that I want you to whip stitch all the way across and then when you get to the absolute corner of the next side I want you to come down, put the next square in and then sew that into position as well. So I'm gonna leave that for you. When you're ready at the very end you're just gonna weave in and out three times. So back and forth three times and then just trim off your one and then go and sew off the other edge so that you have a complete square. So I'm back and now I have sewed everything together using the invisible join and now this is all together. So now there are nine rounds of doing double crochet starting with this. I wanna give you a fair warning. This one right here, the last one week number four has tension to it. You're gonna have to stretch it. So when you're looking at it from this perspective if it's kinda looking like it's warping on you just give that a stretch in the corners in order to get it to lay flat okay. So there's a bit of tension the way you do it and once you give it that you'll see that it will sit down. So I want you to start, we're gonna do round number one together and I'm just gonna tell you how to do it and I'll show you as well just to get started. I want you to start in this loop okay. So this is that, that loop that's gonna hold. This is the only one that you have not secured. The rest of them have been sewn into position. So using th uh, three rounds of the main color and then you're gonna switch off to the next color and then switch off to the next. So just coming into the corner, just join it and you're going to just have a slip knot. Okay, so slip stitch and then one, two, three counts as a double crochet and in the same one I want you to place in a double crochet. So this will hold that loop from ever falling out on you. So moving along just peel it back if you can't see it just go along and double crochet in each stitch going all the way across and then you'll get to the next corner. So the corners will always be the same in the next nine rounds. They'll always be um, two double crochet, two, couple, two double crochets, chain two and two double crochets. So this is all that it's gonna take. So you're just gonna do three rounds of this main color, three rounds of the next and then three rounds of the, the final color in order to get it to go and work all the way out. When you get all the way back you're going to come to the stitch before it and then you're just gonna finish off this corner with putting in two double crochets and then you're going to chain two slip stitch and then you're going to join it and then you're just gonna move up again and just start again. So chain up three, double crochet in the same spot and then one double crochet in each of them going all the way around. So it's a very simplistic uh, border. Um, you know you put in a lot of time into your whole project and so if you can see it from this perspective it's really quite fun and now you can just sit back watch TV and you can just go round and round nine times using the yarns that you have chosen in order to have this blanket. So this is it for now. Let me uh, do that and then I'll be back and then I'll show you what mine looks like. I've done mine to match my hosts and then you'll be able to show us yours and then we have a giveaway as well involved with this at the end as well. So I'll be back later when I have all nine rounds done. 
So I'm now all finished and I'm going to make an exception for the rule for the challenge. So in the second color, this is the one with all the puffs in it, uh, the popcorn stitches. This one here, I ran out of yarn too early, therefore I could not complete three rounds as suggested. So in instead of telling you to go get another ball because I'm a loose crocheter, I'm going to make an exception. So color A, you should have three rounds. Color B, and C, you can only have two rounds if you wish instead of three of each. And again, that's gonna be completely up to you. Also got a word of caution then on this particular square. This is the one with the, the stitch work that's on the side here that pops up is like the ladder work. This one here, I found the tension is really quite strong. So you're gonna need to block your afghan at the end of your project. How to block is that you toss it in the washing machine and you just fill it with water, let it soak and then immediately just switch it over to a spin cycle and let it spin and then it will be just damp and then make sure that water is uh, cold so that the colors don't bleed on you. They shouldn't bleed but if they are going to bleed then they will. Make sure it is cold water and then lay it down on a flat surface. It could be a floor and just let it dry. So just stretch it out as you need it and just let it dry overnight and then your afghan would be good to go. So this is how you would complete this one. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you so much for joining me. I gotta now just uh, tie in my loose ends and everything is good to go. So until next time, it's Mikey on behalf of my friends over at Joanne as well as the crochetcrowd.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye-bye. So that's it for now. You're going to put this together and it's gonna be quite fabulous. We've done our border by this point and I think that you're going to enjoy this particular blanket for years to come. So